This device that I'm going to show you in a moment is called a Van de Graaff generator. It's a very simple way of producing comparatively high voltages. If you take a look at it, it consists of a motor. The motor drives this belt with a pulley at the bottom. At the bottom, there's also a comb which transfers charge to the belt. The charge carry is carried up the belt and is then removed at the top by another comb. Now, in crude terms, the electrostatic charge is going to try and get as far away from each other itself as possible, and so it will spread itself over the surface of the sphere. We can actually be a little bit more uh, systematic about that. This is simply to discharge it, and what we will be able to do is to get a spark to jump from the large sphere to the small sphere, which simply grounds the system. So, we start the motor running. We're probably getting that spark to jump about five centimeters. Uh, in perfectly dry conditions, we'd get it to jump a little bit further than that. We'd probably get it to jump about 10 centimeters. In a few moments, I'll work out what the charge on that ball is and correspondingly what the voltage on that ball is, and hence how far we would expect to be able to get a charge to jump. One of the very important things if you work with a Van de Graaff generator is to remember to ground it afterwards because you can give yourself a nasty shock if you forget that. The second effect that I want to show with this, and this is an interesting device. It's known as an electrostatic windmill. This simply consists of three wires which have bent pointed ends. I can put this on top of the Van de Graaff, and we can start it running again. And you'll notice it rotates quite rapidly. I'll try and explain to you how this comes about. So this is what the electrostatic windmill looks like. It's three pieces of wire, 120 degrees. The end of each piece of wire is bent at right angles and sharpened to a point. Now, what happens when we put this on the Van de Graaff generator is, of course, this acquires an electrostatic charge and hence an electrostatic potential. Now, you've seen that the electric field is strongest in regions where the radius of curvature is very small. The sphere itself has a large radius of curvature, so the electric field is comparatively small. But at the very tip there, the radius of curvature is very small, and hence the electric field, which goes like one over the radius of curvature, is very large. The electric field at that point is strong enough to ionize the atoms that come close by, the oxygen and nitrogen in the air. And as a result, th those are ionized to form electrons and positively charged ions. The electrons are repelled quite rapidly from this, and simply from Newton's third law, conservation of momentum, if the electrons are repelled in that direction, this will recoil in that direction. And that's what spins the device. It's quite a subtle piece of physics that's going on in this device.